Thank you. Leo, can you talk about what days like today mean uh, to come out and see uh, the guys you did battle with, and the guys who worked on your cars, and friends and fans? It's unbelievable to come back and see the guys that you run with the years, competed with against the years, that built the cars you ran, and I mean, this is, I can't wait to get here when this, you know, when these, because every time you come there's a less guys, less guys, you get to miss them, and it's, it's the greatest thing that, Ever, this is Al Finney for doing this and all these guys. This is the greatest thing since 7-Up. You talk about some of them being missing. Does it make the guys who remain, does it make you all even tighter as the years go by? Uh, well, you know, we're, we live, I'm living so far apart. I, I mean, I, like I'm up here, I see the guys up here. I'm not well known in Florida, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I competed up here all the time. Right. You know, as far as I went, it was Martinsville. When I get down there, we ran New Smyrna Speedway and, you know, never competitive. Like, up here, I, up here I was competitive. I mean, I, you know, this, this was my stamping grounds. New England, New York, and New Jersey, Martinsville. But I was never a big track man, you know. I never, I, I, that came after my heyday. I mean, nobody was looking for a 60-year-old big car driver, you know what I mean? Nobody's looking for Leo Cleary in Daytona, you know? When you come into a place like this and you first drive in the gate, uh, any racetrack, yeah. the ones that are left, uh, what goes through your mind? Does it, do you think of the winds there? Do you think yeah. of... I remember running the rim here, and now they... I mean, when we come down here, you ran it right to the edge of the dirt, and now they're telling me it ain't the way to go. You stay in the bottom. It, you know, this used to be all dirt up on the outside of this rim, and you get up here, you were in trouble. But... Uh, I used to love to come here and run it right on the rim. Give the guy the bottom and he couldn't get you, you know. Till one night, the 100th lap or the far, the 99th lap, Kenny Bouchard tried to run me and the both of us ended up in the fence not finishing. Yeah. Whose fault was it? His fault. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. Now you were a guy that built your own cars and did all yeah. the chassis work and yeah. tinkered with everything that, that you drove. That was the best, that was the, the, that was the part I loved of it. I love fooling with the car, you know? And I think when you fool with the car, you're a better race driver. Because you learn what it needs. I can come in and tell somebody, but if they don't understand, but if I say, let's do this, and you go out and it works, if it don't work, you're to blame. I, you know, now it's all computerized. You, the driver just gets in the car and they press some buttons, but in the old days, your seat of your ass told you which way it was going. And I think, I think the best years I, I loved was from the 60s to the mid 80s, yeah, the early 80s, before Jeff and all these guys that come with all Armstrong's money and Hood's money and all. We had more fun. Bernie Barrows is the most enjoy, and Joe Brady is more fun than I ever had, you know? You were always known as a hard-nosed racer. Is that just a product of the places that you started at? You know the, the yeah. You are, you're, you're, you're getting a few fists. I paid a lot of fines for paying guys back. You know what I mean? I didn't believe in paying a guy back with the car. I wasn't going to wreck his car. But you'll answer to me when we get in the pits. You know that's. I'd rather take. I'd rather pay a fifty-dollar fine than wreck him and wreck my car. You know what I mean? But when they started finding 200 bucks, like I whacked a uh, cook up in Dover and when it cost me 200, I started putting my hands in my pocket. Because 200 bucks with six kids was a lot of money. <laughs> and what has it meant after all these years to be a member of the Near Hall of Fame and, and to look at the group that you're in with? Biggest honor, you know, I never thought this day, I never thought I'd ever be in a Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? You, and you see it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's getting hard to get in them. Yeah. When, we, when it started it was easy because there was only so many of us. Yeah. Now there's so many guys that are, are eligible they can't get in. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that should be in it but how big can, how many can you put in? You know? But at the same time, you, you know, you say there's a lot of guys who deserve to be in there. You are in there, so does that yeah. make it even more of an honor? Like, oh, yeah. I must oh, have, yeah. I must I'm thinking, okay. I'm, I'm looking at guys out there that beat me that aren't in it. Yeah. You know, I'm saying how lucky, yeah. how lucky, uh, uh, you know, I was very honored to get in it the second year. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't think I should have been in it yet. But you're there. Uh, yeah, I'm there, yeah. you know. But I'll tell you, I had more fun racing than anybody. Yeah. 
win, lose a draw, I wouldn't trade one minute of it. And when you go to the Hall of Fame dinner and see those guys, uh, I watch you guys after the first half hour or so when you're talking when you first get there and everybody's elbowing each other. It's like your kids again, isn't it? Yeah, right, yeah. You know, like, I mean, I can't believe I'm as old as I am. I really can't. You know, you still feel like you're 50. Yeah. You feel like you could jump in the car right now and and do the job, which is beyond, is, I'm beyond that stage. But you, you still say, geez, I could run that thing. Does this still feel like home? Not specifically this place, but a racetrack? Yeah. The, the racetrack I miss more than anything in the world is Westboro Speedway. Wow. Rickety old, one or something, you could win there. There was no, nobody, I mean, there was two grooves. One guy had the groove, he had the other. Uh, one thing, there was no block in there. Because you could, you could, I, I, the short track, I mean, I won Seacong. I never won a championship at West. I won Seacong, Stafford, not Stafford, Thompson, all that, but the place I loved to go to was Westboro. And when, and when we first started, when I, I, hadn't, I haven't drank for 40 years, but before that, we used to wear the key club out in Westboro Park. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what was the key club? It was a bar next to the track. <laughs> Afterwards, we get stiff. Run the race all over again. Oh, <laughs> you want to know something? All the guys that I built cars with, the only one that's alive is Joe Brady, Joe Garrier, John Doherty, Charlie Perkins, George Dreiser, you know, those guys were all dead. You know, they were all dead. Make it fun to still see the cars then, you know? Oh, yeah. There's something yeah. left, yeah. you know? And Joe Brady uh, is still going at it. Yeah.